Hello, it's Mari and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to make a quick video about how I usually get nanny jobs and babysitting jobs on specifically care.com because that's the app that I use but I know that there's different apps depending on where you are that are like most popular for your area so I'll try to keep it as general as possible. I've gotten jobs in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Alabama all on care.com. Actually in Alabama, I think I used a different site because care.com wasn't popular where I was living down there. Anyway, I've just gotten so many babysitting jobs through these sites and a few nannying jobs as well. So I was just gonna share my tips for how I get those. So to give you some background information, I've been babysitting since I was about 13 years old, maybe 12. I just started babysitting kids in the neighborhood when their parents would like be in the yard. So I've always loved babysitting so I had a lot of sort of background experience that I could put into my bio and everything. If you don't have a lot of experience you can still totally find jobs but just make sure to sound as confident as possible and use any experience that you have with kids at all to your advantage. People want to know that they can trust you taking care of their kids and that you're not gonna like lose them or let them die or anything like that. So I started using care.com right when I turned 16, right when I got my license because before, like I said, I was just babysitting around the neighborhood and I wanted to finally be able to drive places and have more jobs and it totally worked. When you're making your profile, you want to include as much information as possible, but not too much detailed information about like specifically where you live, say in general like what year you are in school or how old you are and some stuff about yourself, maybe your hobbies, um, personality traits, what you would like to do with kids, if you have a preference of age of children that you like to watch the most, if you're comfortable with kids with disabilities or not, uh, if you're comfortable watching sick kids. Something else that's also really important to include is if you are trained in CPR or not. You can easily, I know it's not an actual certification, but you can train yourself. If you don't know how to do CPR, I would definitely look up YouTube videos on how to do infant and toddler CPR so that you can know the gist of how to do that and at least be able to tell parents that even though you're not certified, you are educated on how to do those things. If you just look up YouTube videos and like practice on anything, it's pretty simple and parents just wanna know that you know at least the motions of it so that you can know what to do if their kid is choking or something. On your profile, there are also usually options to get like background checks, either criminal background checks or driving background checks. Sometimes it's required, but usually it's not, at least on care.com I know for sure it's not required. But if you do have those things, which they cost like around $10 or something to get done, your profile will be boosted more in the search results. So if people are looking in your area, you're more likely to be towards the top of the page if you have those background checks. I never paid to get them done. I was on care.com for at least two years without either of the background checks. One person ran a background check on me because she wanted to, I guess, so she paid for it and did it herself. But I never had either of the checks on there for at least two years until one year they were like doing a promotion and if you had been a member for so long already and didn't have background checks, they did them for free. So I have them on there now for me, but you definitely don't need to have them to still be successful and find jobs. Okay, so I guess I'll just read what I have in my bio now for an example if you want to know what you could possibly write. Hey, my name is Mari and I am 19 years old. I'm 20 now, have not updated that. I'm a student at UW-Madison and have been babysitting since I was 13 years old. I'm certified through the Red Cross babysitting program and have been trained in CPR. I have experience with infants and I'm comfortable at this point with kids of any age. I have been a full-time nanny to three kids for the past three summers now and absolutely love it. Babysitting is something I do year round for extra money and to me it doesn't even feel like work since I enjoy the job so much. I like to stay busy and have lots of energy to keep up with whatever activities your kids enjoy. Some things I enjoy to do in my free time are go on runs, attend yoga classes, hang out with friends, and read. Lastly, I love animals, enjoy cleaning, and I'm very organized in school and at home. If you're considering me as a caregiver, I am more than willing to provide references, just let me know. 
So that's an example of some stuff you can say. I guess don't worry too much about what not to say. Just make sure that you're including your experience. Maybe give examples of experience. If you can provide references, you should definitely say that you can because some people would just like to be able to ask some other parents their opinion of you. I also have some work history in here. It looks like I don't remember ever adding that, but you can add some babysitter families that you have. So I put in three that I would use for references if anybody ever wanted references from me. Okay, so now I'll talk a little bit about how to actually get jobs once you have your profile set up. The first thing I would say that you need to do is just literally apply to as many jobs as possible. You might think in your head, like if all these people apply, I'm not gonna be able to do all these, but that doesn't matter because not everybody's gonna reply. Um, you won't be a good fit for everybody. Some people might have already found a sitter. So really just scroll through the jobs in your area and don't apply for ones that you don't think would be a good fit. Like really read them through and see if it's worth your time even applying. Really read through the jobs, just see what ones you think might work, what ones line up with your availability when you want to be working, and then type a nice paragraph to send off to them to apply. And do that with as many as many jobs as you can and you'll get more jobs the more that you apply for. So in the message that you type when you're applying for jobs, like I said, you type a little paragraph to let them know that you're interested. This message, it can just be copied and pasted, same for each family, but in order to stand out to people, I would really recommend personalizing your messages to making them fit whatever job description they have and like what they need from you. For example, I have a generic message in my notes in my phone that I use as like a template and then I use that for every job that I apply for for babysitting but I'll change like the beginning of it or the middle of it or the end of it to say something that applies to like what they're looking for. Like if they have a four-year-old boy, I can be like, I've babysat many four-year-old boys before and I love them or something like that. Or what time you're looking for works perfect for me. Like that's exactly when I'm looking to have a babysitting job. So just stuff like that, personalizing the message to make them really see that you care and are reading what their job is even about will make them more likely to respond to you and consider you as a babysitter. This message also, even though I said to personalize it it really shouldn't be that long okay I usually end my messages with something like my bio has a lot more info about myself and my experience and I would love to discuss more to see if things would work out if you are interested exclamation point so something like that to just say like if they are interested there's more information about you in your bio so that you can just keep the initial message you send nice and short for them. After you start applying to jobs, make sure to have the notifications on for whatever app you're using. The faster you reply, the more likely they will be to choose you if they do end up replying to you and considering you to be a caregiver. So just always make sure that if you're in a day or a week where you're applying for a lot of jobs, make sure to like be checking your messages and be replying to people as fast as you can. Something else that I would recommend, I always meet the parent or parents or parents and kids somewhere public together first. I've met so many people in Starbucks or other coffee shops, so I would definitely recommend doing that just so that you can make sure they're like real people with children and meeting people somewhere public first is always a good idea. There's one sketchy experience that I've had where they didn't want to meet me in public, they only wanted me to come to their house and I didn't and then they ended up just stopping replying. So never fold for just going straight to their house for the first time because you don't want something to happen that could be bad. So when you're applying for these jobs and when you're being interviewed or meeting these people in public, you should always also obviously be honest. I don't know if I need to say that but doing anything over online messaging or applying for jobs is way easier if you're really being honest with them and with yourself. There was only one case where I ended up going through with something that I couldn't tell if I was gonna like the family that much, but I didn't really care because it was like an after school nanny job and I was just gonna go watch these two boys after school twice a week or something. So I was like, I can totally handle that. It's not that much. But when I went to their house, I just didn't feel that comfortable there. Even the activities that the boys liked to do just like weren't things that I really did a lot with kids. And so it ended up just not being a good fit. And I only did it for like a month before I had to tell the mom that I just, I actually don't remember if I lied and made something up or if I was honest and said that I 
wasn't comfortable. That was the only awkward case that I ended up in where I ended up having to back out a month into it. Everything else has worked out pretty fine because I've just only applied for jobs that seem right for me and only gone through with jobs that seemed right for me. One last thing that I think would be good to mention is a lot of people when they first start babysitting or nannying don't know how much money to ask for and I know that's totally dependent on where you live. If you live in like a neighborhood with a bunch of mansions and big houses you can charge a lot more for babysitting than you could if you're living in like a suburban neighborhood in Minnesota. I think that a good place to start if you're 16 years old and just got your license just starting to drive around to babysit would be $10 an hour for one kid and then go up from there. Maybe like two more dollars an hour per kid or one more dollar an hour per kid depending on the family and how you're feeling. Some families haven't even asked me what I charge, they just will pay me and usually when they do that they pay pretty well. However, I will say that as you get older you can definitely start charging more. So if you're 18, or older, you can definitely charge more than $10 an hour for one kid. Ultimately, it comes down to the fact that you're watching their kid when they're not there, and if they can trust you to keep that kid safe and healthy and everything, then they're probably willing to pay you a good amount of money to do that, to just give them peace of mind when they go out that their child is safe. So if you're confident in your ability as a babysitter and you are 18 or older, definitely start charging more money. Just wanted to bring that up. One last thing that I'll mention before ending this video is that if you're planning on moving soon, I don't know if you're going to college or if your parents are moving or if you're just moving, honestly, don't mention that unless they specifically ask you because if they know that you're moving away pretty soon, they're probably not gonna want you to start watching their kids because most people want somebody who they can call back and use for at least a year if not longer or just like don't bring it up i remember when i was in alabama i knew i was transferring but i still wanted to be babysitting second semester so i was still meeting people and finding babysitting families in alabama and i don't think you're lying you're just not bringing it up unless they ask and then obviously if they ask you should tell them you're moving because they cared enough to ask Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any more questions in the comments below, and if this helped you even slightly at all, give me a thumbs up. I'll appreciate it a lot, and yeah, thanks for watching.